Hello my lovelies, good afternoon and welcome to my kitchen, the Queen's Curry Kitchen. You are in my kitchen in Queens where I'm making curry and indeed today I am making curry. I'm going to show you all the things that I cooked today and I thought this is a great idea to bring you in and have you check out whatever is going on. Okay, so I have for you, um, well, let me see, what do I have for you? Yes, I have for you two things that I'm going to show you. One of them is a summer salad with corn. The other thing I'm going to show you is how to make the dough for the perfect rotis. So if this is something you're struggling with, you're really going to benefit from this video. Stay till the end. It's going to be a long video. I don't use the magic of editing and cut short the cooking time. So it's very realistic. Okay, so let's start with uh, the first couple of things that I've already cooked, which I want to show you. One right here is gobi alu, which I've already made. This is for dinner tonight. This is cauliflower with potatoes. Then I have a yellow masoor dal tarka. This is organic pink lentils that have been tempered with onions, tomatoes, ginger, and garlic. These are made. I've also made a palak paneer, which is spinach with Indian cottage cheese, you can see. I blanch the spinach, then I give it an ice bath, and then I blend it, and then I actually make the tempering. Okay, so that's that. This is almost done. I've actually turned off the stove, so this is good to go. I've sauteed the paneer pieces. You can also air fry them and then dunk them in hot uh, salted water to keep them nice and soft. This is my palak paneer. This is the rest of the dal tarka, you can see. It's nice and thick. If you like your dal to be a little bit runny, you can always add water and boil it again before serving, especially if you're going to be eating it with rice. I have tempered this with dry red chilies, cumin, ginger, garlic, onions, and tomatoes, and all of the Indian spices that come from my spice box that's sitting right there. Okay, so that's what we have going on. Here is the flour that I'm going to be needing to show you how the perfect dough for the rotis is made. Um, my friend from childhood needs to know why have I made so much food well I've made so much food because I don't want to cook for the next couple of days and so I'm going to put this in the fridge and that way if we do a combination of this and this tonight then we can do gobi alu tomorrow I also have a chicken curry that I'm actually making in my instant pot sorry to all the vegetarians who are tuned in um, so I've actually cooked it down it was a combination of onions, tomatoes, ginger, garlic, cardamom, cinnamon, bay leaves. And now I'm just adding boiling water to this to make the curry. I've also added potatoes. I've seared it down to the point where the chicken is pretty much almost cooked. And the potatoes need to just have a little more give to them. You can see when the potatoes have sharp edges, you know that your potato is still raw. So I'm, I've just added a little bit of boiling water. Remember, when you're tempering down your curries, don't add cold water. It brings down the temperature of the cooking. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this boiling water. And a tad bit of cilantro for good measure. And then I'm going to close this instant pot. Make sure it's set to sealing mode. And I am going to manually set the timer for about four minutes actually three minutes should be more than enough for the potatoes and I'm gonna hit the start button so this will be done by the time we're done with the video this curry will actually be done then I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna show you how to make a seasonal corn peach veggie salad and I'm gonna use the mayo that's here I'll also show you some Indian tweaks that I'm going to do I have a chutney here that I'm gonna be using to round out the flavor profile okay so let's first start with making the dough for the rotis this is the perfect method just follow along if you do it like this you'll never have any problems all your rotis will fluff up and make sure you allow the dough to rest okay so for one thing wash your hands really nicely that's number one then second of all um, for every cup of dough you actually get about six rotis um, also depends on individual sizes, how big or how small your rotis are, but on an average, I use this mat, so my rotis are about this big. This is a silicone mat, I use that over my countertop to protect it, it's just a good old Amazon find. Okay, so I don't add any salt 
to my flour. This is whole wheat flour, um, organic whole wheat flour. You can use golden temple or any other flour that's not organic as well. It'll work. The proportion of flour to water. For two cups of flour, you need one cup of water. The trick to getting the perfect atta is don't add all the water at once. Okay, so you have to add the water slowly and you have to work the dough in. You have to work it in. You have to slowly combine all of the liquid into the flour. So it's not like baking. This is a very different kind of a technique. Right? So just keep gathering it with your hands like this. And you'll see it's going to start coming together. Whatever is coming together, just push it to the side of your kneading bowl. You could use a deeper bowl. You could use a wider bowl, whatever you have. This is something my mom gave me. I think it's too small for my hands, but I use it every now and then. Then go ahead and add a little more water. Again, bring it together. The reason why we add a little water at a time is then we can control how runny or tight our dough is. If you're making puris, make a tight dough. If you're making rotis, then make a soft dough. The amount of moisture that you pack into your atta is going to determine how soft your rotis are going to be. If you don't have enough water in your dough, your rotis are going to be tight, crisp, and dry. Okay, so when you add enough water to your dough, that becomes steam when you put it on the skillet top. And that steam helps to expand the rotis to give you two layers. If you don't have enough water, then your rotis will not puff up. Of course, there is something to do with the rolling out technique and the timing of flipping the rotis that's a big one so you can see this big lump that's already formed i'm going to set this on the side and i'm going to work on this again same thing just add a little bit of water it can seem a little messy but trust me i'll tell you the trick of how do you know when your dough is ready and if i say atta too many times just forgive me because that's what we call it in hindi Dough and atta is the same thing, but atta we also call atta for dry flour. In this case, whenever I'm saying atta, it obviously means kneaded dough. Okay. So again, gather it together. It's almost like playing with Play-Doh. And you'll see it's a little messy. It's a little uncomfortable. Hey, it's totally fine. You'll see, you see how dirty my hands are? Like everything is stuck to my hands. When we end this process, my bowl will be absolutely clean. My hands will be absolutely clean. Okay, I'm going to dip my hands into the water and start gathering it, whatever is left of it, right? So this way, when you break it down into manageable portions, even if you have a lot of dough that you have to knead, it's not going to get overwhelming. This is unbleached whole wheat atta, which is also called durum flour. It's different from bleached flour, which is maida. So you can see this came together. Now I'm going to bring these guys back. You see how dry this is? We're going to need all of them together. We're going to add in this little guy. So there's definitely a process and there is a technique. There is a science. The more time you spend in kneading your dough and releasing the gluten, the less hard your gut has to work to digest the gluten from the roti. So it's super important to really spend your time when you knead the dough, I'm going in with my knuckles and really like pushing them in to spread it out and then gather it back up again and then use the heel of your palm to press it down. It's very tight and very dry right now. How I know is when I split it, I see these cracks. So go back, dip your hand in water and then just give it a good massage and then roll it back onto itself. Okay. We're going to do this a few times and you'll see that as you keep doing it, your dough is going to keep getting softer. I can smell the chicken curry. <laughs> see how my hands are becoming cleaner? So yes, it's a long video, but I'm just really making it a point that you learn it once and for all. I cannot tell you how many people in their late 20s, 30s, um, newlywed brides people who have just started working in our restaurant do not know how to knead the right dough you see how cracked this is go back again wet your hands 
give it a good massage. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set this dough aside. And then in the end, I'll show you the comparison of what it looks like in the end versus this, okay? Even when I teach a class of roti making, people are very fascinated about how the roti fluffs up. But there's a lot of science behind how to make that happen. It's not going to happen on its own. You just have to have all of the variables, all the ducks in tow in order for that to happen. This is the atta that I'm going to set aside. I'm going to show you a comparative after we're done. Clean around your bowl. You can use this stainless steel. You can use wood. You can use glass. Whatever kind of bowl you have. Just keep kneading it. At a certain point, I like to get rid of this. You see how clean this is? After a certain point, I like to get rid of it and work directly on the countertop. I feel like it gives me the most freedom and it also allows me to pick up all of these little flecks of flour and dough that are scattered on my board so just keep kneading it again spread it when you spread it you'll see how cracks are there go back again and add a little water to this yes it's a long video so you know what have the patience also when you cook cook with patience don't cook as if you have to work at the fire station and go put out a fire somewhere because that's the energy that goes in your food. Okay, I'm going in with both my hands. If you only want to work with one hand, that's fine. Now I'm just punching it in. Gonna add a little more water. You see how much water it actually takes. I told you the proportion, but even after that, keep a few tablespoons to be able to do this to your dough. The longer you need your dough, the more you release the gluten, the easier your rotis will be to digest. They'll also be soft and fluffy. Trust me, your family will thank you for it. I think I'm going to do one last smear of water. It's really getting there. You see, like when you spread it, there's no cracks. Do you see this? There's like no cracks. So I know that I'm pretty much there. Okay, just roll it around. You could be doing this in the same bowl in which you were kneading the dough. You don't have to come down to the countertop. I just love using the extra space, so I'm not complaining. Okay, now it'll start moving as a ball. You, you'll see that it's not so tight anymore. It has a lot of flexibility. You just rock it back and forth, okay? Then you're going to go ahead and use any oil that you have, olive oil, avocado. This is avocado oil. Any kind of oil that you have, give it a massage. And go in with your thumbs. Just give it one last knead. This is a dough, dough that doesn't have any leavening agents, so there's no yeast, there's no rising agents, and this is a bread that we make every day, so we don't really need to rest the dough overnight or anything for proofing. It's good to go. I just need to rest it for three to five minutes so that the gluten has a chance to relax. I'm just going to show you the comparative analysis of the piece of dough that I had kept aside. Hello, hello, Tim. How are you today? My camera is flipped downward, so I'm not really able to see the comments. I'm going to quickly wash my hands, and I'm going to get back in there and show you all the comments. Then we'll jump into making the salad. We're going to do a summer corn salad with peach, cucumber, and farm fresh baby carrots. You see how silky and smooth this is? I hope the light can do justice and you're able to see the way the light catches. It literally looks like a baby's butt. You see, you remember this one that I'd set aside? Do you see the difference in the texture? So if it looks like cellulite, it's not ready yet. If it looks like a baby's butt, it's ready. I'm also going to work on this little guy and then add it back to the big ball of dough. So that's how much work was still needed for this to become this, okay? So I'm just gonna add this in. They're all going to live like a happy family. I'm gonna stick it back in my bowl. And just add a little bit of water so that it doesn't dry out. And I'm going to let it rest. I will be back with a quick wash of hands. And I'll show you how we make the salad. We're going to get started on that. Okay. Let me just quickly flip the camera and say a quick hello to all the people that I've missed. <laughs> Surviving. No, don't survive. You need to thrive, baby. Don't survive. 
Okay, um, Dorothy Walker is watching. Welcome, welcome. Good morning, Payaldar, my darling Krishna is watching. Priyanka Kumara is watching. Nisha is, of course, here. She is my childhood friend. And Vijaya Mehta is watching. So, hello, hello, and welcome. Good evening. Depending on what time of day it is and where in the world you're watching me from, greetings to all of you. Uh, I don't know if I did something stupid to the sound. This is a new phone, and sometimes the sound can be challenging. Okay. Now, coming to the salad, I have this corn that I got from the farm over the weekend and I got a lot of it. So what I did was I took it off, I shucked it from the husk and the cob and then I took out the kernels, then I put it in the instant pot and I steamed it. So it's fully cooked. Sometimes I also make this salad with roasted corn and I just roast it directly. I roast the cob directly on the flame of the stove. So this is the corn. I'm also going to be adding some cucumbers, some farm fresh carrots. These carrots also and cucumbers also came with my CSA box, the box that I get from the farm every week. It's called the Connected Chef. If you're in New York City, in Queens, you have access to that. Just support your local farms and local agriculture. It's going to be beneficial for everybody and Mother Earth as well. Okay, so... All of this corn goes in. I already added the cucumbers. I'm going to bring a spoon to toss everything together. Now for my salads that are cream based, I either usually use heavy whipping cream or I use this mayonnaise which is from the Russian grocery store. I can't read what it says but this is what the package looks like. What I like about the Russian brand of mayonnaise is that it's not loaded with sugar and it doesn't have this weird kind of corn canola oil smell which a lot of the american mayo mayonnaise has also if you're vegetarian you can use veginaise or you can make your own with milk and olive oil okay so i'm just going to do one squirt of this not a lot i'll still calibrate it there is no recipe darling so if you're coming at me and say hey tell us how many tablespoons i don't know just make it your own okay so give it a toss the mayonnaise itself is really nice and it gives a nice creamy texture to it so you don't really need to overdo it i think it needs a little bit more i do have a sweet surprise that i'm going to add to this you can add grapes cranberries boiled eggs dill parsley anything that you like in terms of flavor you can also add cranberries or walnuts everything tastes good with corn i don't know what it is okay so this is how creamy i want it i don't want to overdo the cream part of it then to this i'm going to add my indian chutney this is a combination of mint cilantro very little cilantro mostly mint ginger garlic a shallot some sugar black salt cumin seeds coriander seed powder and it just has a nice kind of like a smoky flavor because of the mint and the sugar I'm gonna give this a gentle toss then i'm gonna go ahead and add these these peaches also came with the box that i got from the farm so i'm basically just trying to use all the things that i get from my csa box Okay, then I'm going to add some cilantro. Okay, corn and cilantro I think is a match made in heaven. If you want to add any kind of cheese or whatever, feel free to do that. I'm also going to add this seasoning blend called Elote, which is from Trader Joe's. It's just uh, the seasoning that goes on the corn on in Mexican food food stands it's called elote and i'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice wow this is like the driest lime ever <laughs> nothing's coming out Ugh, maybe i'm not strong enough all right so lemon juice in there and then i'm gonna add a little bit of shaved beets 
these beets are also from the farm so it's a nice attractive beautiful looking salad you can take it to your potlucks if you don't want to do this with corn you can do it with red skin potatoes just boil them and bring them to your potlucks whoops so this is elote if anybody wants to take a screenshot it's from trader joe's it's called elote and it's a mexican seasoning if you don't have this you can always use the tajin there's just many options so don't feel like you can't do a recipe because you only have to use that thing just make it your own if you don't do mayonnaise you can always use cashew yogurt you can use veggie maize there's many ways to do this okay give it a quick i'm gonna do a taste test on camera and then see if i need to add anything i need to take away anything so it's nice and crunchy um you can also add apples if you don't have peaches okay so here is the taste test hello hello okay this is what i have hey kina how are you baby it does not need anything i'm telling you for people that like spicy stuff you can add a little bit of black pepper if you want but honestly this does not need anything i will personally go ahead and add some more beets Ta -da. Ta -da. yes so you know what making these are raw beets i did not boil them or anything i have boiled some beets and maybe in the next couple of days i'll come on live and show you what i do with those beets i've just boiled them and put them in the freezer okay so here it is let's do a very pretty plating and see how we can make this look even prettier and for that i think i'm gonna use We're going to use a nice summer plate. Let me bring my little ring. Oh, you can also actually serve this. If you have cucumbers that, are, that have too many seeds, you can actually scoop this out and serve the salad inside this. It makes a really good presentation. You can also serve it inside lettuce cups, and that makes a really good presentation as well. I'm going to use my fried egg ring stick this in here and if you want a little bit of a barbecue flavor you can add a dash of barbecue sauce it tastes really nice or you can add smoked paprika it'll have a nice smoky flavor if you char the corn on your grill or your stovetop then you won't need to do that okay so that's that and then i'm gonna go ahead Add a couple of beets and some cilantro. See, like who says you cannot make simple things look fancy? Of course you can. And you always eat with your eyes first, right? I didn't add any onions or whatever. It's just a matter of personal preference. I don't like to put onions in anything that's going to sit and chill in the fridge because I feel like the onions taste kind of weird. But it's just a personal thing. It's not... You don't have to do it. Okay. And then we are gently going to lift this off. Don't fall, baby. There you go. You can serve it with some chips. You can serve it with banana chips. You can serve it with celery sticks. There you go. So this is your summer corn salad. If you haven't tried it, you should try to make it. Just use whatever you have in your house. Just make it colorful. If it's all one color, maybe you can use red peppers to add that pop of color. Maybe you can use beets like I did. You can use carrots. Whatever you feel like you need to do, just add that. Okay, so it's really, really good. It's delicious. And like I said, I use the Russian mayonnaise. If you don't have the Russian mayonnaise, just use whatever you got, darling. That should do it, okay? So now, did you want me to make a roti and show you? Oh my God, look at my clothes. Did you want me to make a roti and show you how um, I roll it? Or maybe I should just get off this live and then come back in another live and just do the roti making. How about that? 
let me do that all right hello ruby 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 good morning good evening good afternoon echo nekhani baje quarter to two so my target was to leave the house at three o'clock after cleaning up everything my kitchen literally looks like a tornado hit it but you know what when you're cooking all those things you also clean up one day and then you don't come in the kitchen for the next two days yeah i'm telling you it works okay so if you don't do meal prep start doing meal preps and start making smaller quantities of multiple things especially if you're a small family we're just a family of three and i take uh, my dinner from home i don't eat at the restaurant but my dinner is the same every day it's just sorted vegetables and brown jasmine rice okay so i will catch you in another video i'm going to come back in a little bit i might go live on tiktok and do the roti making tutorial there um my other device is not working so i can only do one live at a time but thank you for everybody that joined me today if you are not a part of the indian food lovers curry lovers club then join that facebook group because there's a lot of exclusive content coming there also i am coming out with a line of vegan cookies with indian flavors and if you're not a part of this group you don't get the special promotion you don't get the special pricing and you will also miss out being in the giveaway so definitely follow this page turn on your notification so that when i'm here the next time you will get notified right away and you won't miss anything if you joined in the middle of this recipe then you know what just go back and catch us on the replay and if you have any questions drop it in the comments check out my website queenscurrykitchen.com there is a free yes f r e e free chana masala recipe download just for you so go out there download the recipe try it out you might like it it might be the ice breaking recipe that opens the door for you and indian food to be a lifelong friendship if you're tired of takeaway and you don't know how much longer you can keep financing all the delivery apps then get a book that i've written which contains all of the restaurant curry secrets download that ebook and make the best take out curries at home with the help of those books you don't need a million ingredients i've tried to really simplify and demystify the cooking process there is a ton of books there are classes if you want to take a class with me if you want to take a family class if you want to take a class with your son or daughter who is going away to college and you want to give them some basic kitchen skills and teach them a couple of recipes definitely consider taking a class if you live by yourself and you don't have the motivation to cook every day take a class i will teach you how to uh meal prep in that class so that you will be eating healthy and it will be eat, eating flavorful food every single day and honoring your own needs like always be blissful be flavorful that's the message that i'm going to leave you with and i will be jumping on to tiktok to make the rotis i will see you in another video until then be blissful and flavorful and do not forget to make my salad Do catch the replay Samira we're logging out right now but catch the replay and learn how to make this corn salad and how to knead the perfect dough for the perfect rotis okay so all of that already happened turn on your notification so that the next time we are on the live you don't miss out any of the fun bye now take good care